Hi folks, Christy from Shark Pixel here. Apologies for the lost voice, but nothing was gonna keep me from giving you the hot off the press latest releases from this year's Adobe Max. I am finally released from my NDA, thank goodness, and I can now share with you guys, my beautiful retouchers and photographers, how many amazing advancements have been released over the last week. So I'm gonna to talk to you today in this episode about select object in Lightroom Classic. So let's get started. So I've got this image here and while I love the overall composition and everything that's going on, I feel like this highly saturated yellow backpack is totally drawing my eye away from the subject in the photograph. So unless this is a, a commercial for a backpack, which it may be, um, I would like to uh, desaturate the backpack and make it a little bit less uh, aggressive of a yellow. All right, so I'll go over to my develop module. And, and most of us, we are familiar with our new masking icon. But if we go ahead and click into it, you're going to see some changes. The first one uh, was select background, which I talked about in a previous episode. So make sure you watch all the episodes. And now I'm going to talk about select objects. So once we hit select objects, we have two options. We can either draw over the uh, area with our paintbrush or we can simply drag a marquee square around the item that we're trying to select. Okay, so let's try that, that option first. So we've got our uh, marquee activated, and we're just gonna click and drag around almost the entirety of the backpack, and then boom, we are seeing magic happen in front of us. Again, this is all powered by Adobe Sensei and the AI engine and machine learning that uh, Adobe is constantly updating and it's getting better and better and better. So even if at you know the first initial re release, it's not perfect, uh, it's gonna continue to improve um, throughout the, uh, the time that it's around. So we've, we've had this mask immediately pop up and it's almost, I mean, it's almost perfect. I think it might actually be perfect. Uh, I don't know what's going on right there, but that would be an easy fix for adding with the brush tool, for example. Uh, so now that we have this background selected, I'm gonna go ahead and just darken it just a tad and um, maybe desaturate it slightly. Could darken it a little more. And you know, if we wanted to come in and change the color of the backpack, we could easily do that by just doing a hue shift. All right, so we could make it, let's make it green to match in with the trees. And let's darken it a tad, more than a tad. Darken it significantly, make it an army green. Uh, and we'll darken our exposure and just darken the shadows and the blacks. Ooh, not that much just a tad to make it fit in with the uh, overall image. So there we go. I've just added a little bit of uh, warmer temperature, a little bit of yellow to it. And if we look at our before and our after, you can see the changes that we were able to make with that select object um, command. Now, if you see the back strap, go back and watch the new, the new episode on uh, the content aware remove option, which is now part of your spot removal tool. It's super cool. It's powered by AI and it's going to make your life easier as well. So check out all the videos. Okay. So there we go. We've been able to do that. I did want to just uh, point out one other way that I use this kind of technology and I'll do that by going into my YouTube announcements. Here we've got an image of my daughter. It's an over under, so um, it isn't the easiest per se image for uh, the AI to use because I'm pretty sure that they haven't trained the AI on a lot of images that were shot with the waterline through the lens, right? So uh, it would be interesting to see that. So let's go ahead and um, 
use these powerful tools again on this image. So if I wanted to take the sea stars uh, and I wanted to just pop them out a little bit, I can do that. So we'll start at our masking icon. We're gonna choose uh, objects and then I'm gonna use this option here. I'm gonna use this drawing option. So I've got my brush tool. I'm gonna make a selection here. I'm gonna make a selection here. And then I'm gonna also come down and make a selection here. And our selection is made. It's like magic. I cannot tell you how amazing this stuff really is. So we've got our selection of our three C stars. So what I can do is go ahead and increase the saturation slightly, maybe add some dehaze just to make them pop, darken the blacks a little, and um, let's warm them up a little bit color-wise to make them a little bit more red and pop out. So this is a really great start, but I see that the uh, C star that's closest to camera is just slightly um, too dark. So what I can do is I'll go ahead and make a second selection, create a new mask, then I'm gonna choose select objects again, but this time I'm going to use the marquee that we've uh, used previously, and I'm gonna make a selection over just the one star, the one C star. And then I'll go ahead and just brighten that one a tad so that it matches um, the brightness value of the other C stars, okay? All right, so that's the second thing that I have done. Next, let's just do two or three more adjustments using these AI selections. All right, we're going to create a new mask of the uh, subject. So we'll go ahead and let it select our subject for us. Bam. I just wanna point out that not only did Lightroom select the subject in the air, not only did Lightroom select the reflection of the subject on the top of the water, it also selected the subject from underneath the water as well. So first of all, mind blown, right? Okay, so what we'll do with her, let's just warm her up a tad. And then, let's go ahead and fit this. So we warmed her up a tad. Let's go ahead and just brighten her a little. And we'll add some uh, dehaze, just a smidge. You'll see there is a reason why she is um, actually holding a sand dollar um, instead of a sea star. So just for anybody out there who is um, an animal lover, sea stars will suffocate if you hold them out of the water for more than 10 to 30 seconds. Keep them in the water. You can do the photos with them, but just hold them at the top of the water. Um, don't actually pull them out of the water because you will kill them, all right? So let's just keep them alive. All right, so the, there's two more masks that I wanna do, uh, and these are using older, I would say older, but they're not brand spanking new uh, methods. So the first one is going to be select um, sky. So let's go ahead and choose select sky. And we can um, go ahead and darken the sky a tad, maybe bring up the whites of the clouds, add a touch of dehaze, and that looks really nice. And then let's go ahead and create an additional mask using our linear gradient tool. Now this one we should all be familiar with. I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna click and drag up along the water line right there. Now, um, I photographed this in the Bahamas. The water in the Bahamas is quite green. So what I'd like to do is neutralize that green color by adding magenta to the underwater uh, area. If at any point you don't see your, um, your overlay markers, you can hit the H key on your keyboard and that will make them visible. All right, so I wanna pull this down a little bit lower. And for this, we're just going to, I think, add a, a little bit more dehaze in this area down here. And there we go. So I think that this looks great. I'm gonna show you the before and the after. 
if you want to preview what your image looks like without any of the masks visible, you can do that by hitting the light switch that's right here, right next to masks, okay? You can hit that on and off. That will help you visualize what you've actually done with all these amazing masks. So now that we have all these masks, wouldn't it be amazing if we could sync them between similar images? Get ready for this. All right, we have our second image right here, which is similar, but it's not identical, all right? So what we'll do, let's go ahead and sync those two. We'll choose sync settings, and we are back in library mode right now, but if we got, were in develop, we could select both of them down in the film strip, and we could choose sync right here, and it's gonna ask us, well, what exactly do you want to sync? Well, I know that I just want to sync the masking. So we can go ahead and check the top checkbox, which is going to select all masking, or we could select just the specific mask. Now this doesn't make much sense. It's not very um, informative as to what these items are. So it is important to name your masks uh, in Lightroom. So that can be easily done by just double clicking any of the uh, names within the masking panel. All right, so we'll go ahead and choose sync and now it's going to update this sync and it's going to sync these settings to the next image. If I bring them up in survey, well, let's see if I can bring them up together. So there we go. All right, so our initial one that we made all of the changes on is on the left and the new one is on the right and you can see all of the masking has been updated. It's amazing. It's truly amazing. All right, let me come back here. Let's just peek at the masks and see if they really were perfect. I'm going to take my second image into develop. I'll go into my masking panel and here we go. So we have our initial mask. If you hover over any of the icons within the masking uh, section, you'll see a mask overlay show up. So let's just see what those masks uh, actually look like in the, in the synced image. So we've got our initial selection of our three C stars. We have our uh, primary C star, the biggest one closest to the camera. We have our mask of our subject. Now you can see here that this mask of our subject didn't necessarily do as good of a job as our initial one. Well, that's perfectly fine. What we can do is we can choose the add button right here. We can add to this using our uh, object tool. And what I can do is just click and drag around those feet and legs, and then it's going to add those as well to the mask. So it did an okay job, still needs to be improved on just a bit, but um, it does absolutely save you time. So if I had done that, if I had done the add object but instead of using the marquee tool i use the paint brush method and i come in here and select that i think that's going to do a better job yeah all right so happier with that option and then we've got our sky which was easily updated and we have our uh, below the waterline color correction. So I hope that you have enjoyed this little bit on the select object command. There are going to be a lot of videos that get released this week. If you've learned something new today, please subscribe. Please ring the bell so that you're alerted the next time I come out with one. And leave me a comment if you think that this is as, as, as amazing as I think it is, because it truly is incredible. If you want to um, see what I have what announcements I have for Photoshop, please download the, uh, the PDF here, sharkpixel.com forward slash max 22, all lowercase. That is my PDF of all of the new features that are being released into Photoshop, not Lightroom, okay? And if you want to learn all about the new features that are in Lightroom, make sure you watch all the episodes in this series because each one is going to focus on a new release, a new announcement that has just been updated in Lightroom. So thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next course.